Hey guys, finally the long anticipated video for the Huben swaging kit. They sometimes call it a mold, actually it's a it's a swaging die with a sort of a guillotine for cutting the lead. So um, a lot of you already know about this product, from, judging from your comments as well as uh, from some of the uh, uh, posts on different forums but uh, basically what this is is a swaging die that uh, instead of you using uh, molten lead so instead of having uh, uh, lead uh, being molted and then pouring it into the mold uh, you actually use cold pieces of lead and compress it in order to shape a form now uh, I have here actually six boxes, each is uh, divided by two. So in, in each I have some already made pellets in and some of uh, pieces of lead, which is actually not yet made, so bas basically an unswaged uh, pieces of lead. Now unfortunately I cannot show you how you cut the lead, I actually can, I can show you how, to, how you cut the lead, but I don't have any lead wire. And because of this, I actually have a very simple mold that just makes uh, uh, pieces of lead like this. This is, for example, one slightly bigger. Uh, and uh, this is, let's say, the default one. So this is the size approximately. And uh, basically, instead of me having to uh, have to uh, always uh, cast, so melt the lead and uh, cast it into a mold to get this. Uh, I, I could just use a wire, lead wire, and put it through guillotine. Now guillotine works like this. So you have uh, two holes for different uh, size of lead wire. And on the other side you have two screws, two brass screws, and uh, you can tighten this one so these two cannot move. So you uh, select the distance of the single piece, single cut piece of lead you want to have by unscrewing or s screwing in these two screws and then tighten this to keep at that set settings. And once you do that, all you have to do is just put the lead wire through and when it's at place, of course I'm just using this piece of uh, lead myself, then you just push down the guillotine and it cuts it like this. So you get uh, the, this, uh, the piece long as you adjust it with the screw. Um, there actually is a video made by Huben who, to, uh, to show you how to do this. Now personally I don't have that lead wire and also I have a lot of lead at home and and this way I can actually uh, mix a little, uh, make a little mixture to make them a little harder. Now the dye itself is designed for pure lead. So if you put any ad uh, additives in, make sure that you don't put too much. You don't want to have the lead too hard, otherwise you might damage the uh, swaging dye. So they recommend pure lead. I used uh, basically uh, this uh, Casts, the cast pellets are actually from uh, uh, Melton, so Abex basically use the old pellets, which is almost pure lead. I melt them, I cast them in that uh, um, mold, and then I have them ready for swaging. And the swaging procedure, you can take a look in the background how I do it. Uh, I have a press, uh, I have a hydraulic, hydraulic press. You can also use a hammer, basically on Huben. Uh, a video you can see that they basically just hit with the hammer on it. I if if you have possibility, it's much better, much safer, and uh, uh, it won't uh, wear out the die that fast. And the pellets also will be more consistent than if you use a hammer. So you can use some other type of press. I just have a hydraulic press because that's what I have at home, and I just use it for this. Now, uh, <clears throat> now let's get to the reason why I have uh, six boxes here instead of just two. So basically, the mold itself, the, sorry, the die itself is made like this. 
you have a bottom part. I will just zoom in this for you. Bottom part, which is what shapes the rear, the boat tail of the pallet. And you have the cylinder in which you insert the lat. And this is actually a moving part, so I can push it in. I have to pull it out before I insert. Sometimes it's hard, it's easier to do it with the, uh, by inserting the fresh piece of lead inside. So you just put it in like this, push it in so this one gets back. You can even pull this back a little bit so it's fully in. And then you close like so, so make sure it's fully closed. And then you put the top back on. So put the top back on and then you compress and you have to compress it until this top piece presses up against this bottom metal piece. So fully in and um, you don't have to worry if you have too much lead inside because there is a bleed hole. Actually you have, have to have slightly uh, more lead than is actually needed for the pallet uh, because there is a small bleed hole in here. Uh, the bleed hole diameter is actually about one millimeter and once you press this together or use a hammer to uh, press it then the excessive uh, lead will actually come out here and you will clearly see this in the video when I'm using the press. Now the old version had only this hole by the side the new version has also a hole on the uh, actually two holes on the bottom um, <clears throat> I'm not sure why they added this, but I did notice that an, on all version, sometimes this hole gets plugged and you can use too much force on it. So it's not a bad idea to have also additional bleed holes on the bottom. They are actually almost never, they always never uh, let out any lead unless it in here gets plugged and then it cannot push it anywhere else out than in the bottom. So it's, I think it's a good idea that they added this. So once you press this fully together, of course now I uh, take the pallet out, so that's why I was able to press it together with my hand. Then you just remove the bottom part. It's good that you rotate it a bit, remove it, and then just hit this part against the hard surface and the pallet will come out. It won't fly out, it will just remain here. So you can then just shake it in the box with pellets. So, um, let me just show you how the pellets look. So basically, um, this is the end form of the pellet, or a bullet, or a slug. So it's it's the the shape and the uh, consistency is really remarkable. Of course, which swaging process is always the best for uh, any bullet or pellet. So you have a slight detent in the bottom of it and a boat tail. Uh, round nose and it's uh, actually a bore ri or a riding design so the front part actually only presses up against the lens of the barrel and the rear uh, part has a slightly bigger bend bent so or, or a ring or whatever you call it just before the uh, boat tail starts and that one actually seals up uh, so it uh, seals up to the grooves not only uh, touches the land lens so uh, I have three boxes because with this type of die it's actually extremely easy to make different uh, size of uh, pellets or bullets or slugs. All you have to do is put some spacer in so you can push this fully in. And for that reason I have made two such spacers for different sizes. So this, this two actually go on here. If you use only one, I get slightly bigger uh, slug. If I use uh, both of them, I get even bigger slugs. You can also go a little smaller, not much, but uh, a little smaller. But instead of uh, instead of putting uh, rings in here, you actually put it uh, in the hole. So right in here. Sorry, guys, in here. So that means that it uh, this part actually pushes the rod slightly further down, making the bullet even smaller. Um, so with these two options, I get three different pellets, actually four if I included the one that is smaller. 
So the, by default, the pellet will weigh, if it's pure, pure lead, just under 36 grains. So uh, when you uh, cut your lead, or if you cast it like I do before, make sure you have at least, let's say, one to two grains more. You can have much more, but that means that you will just have to press it uh, further down in order to get that excessive uh, lead out of the bleed hole. Uh, <coughs> and with the bigger version, uh, so if I use only one of this washer, only one will give me 44 grains. I'll show you all of these pellets up close, just in a second. And if I use both of them, I get 52 grains. Now, of course, you're probably already asking yourself, why would I want to do this? Huben doesn't accept anything bigger than 11 millimeter in terms of length of pellet. Yes, that's true. I cannot use those bigger slugs for Huben. But I have other air guns, which is a topic of another video, that actually do fit those and they actually work quite well. Actually, with the Wolverine, I'm shooting the 52 grain at 292 meters per second. That's about 145 joules. Sorry guys, I don't know the conversion, but I think it's uh, about 105 or 110 foot pounds in 5.5 caliber, so in 22 caliber. So let's first take a look at this, these slugs close up. So this is the standard one. You can clearly see the biggest in the middle. And this one is uh, so 44 grain, 36 grain, and 52 grain. This 52 is really a beast, a long, long, long bullet. Um, so yeah, that's what you can expect. So uh, <clears throat> I'm actually taking advantage of this um, uh, swaging die um, more than it was actually designed for. And uh, I s must say that I quite like it because I really have options to play around with weights and lengths. Of course, the shape is always the same. So the front uh, round nose and the rear bow tail is always the same, but the body can be different lengths. Uh, okay, so I've covered, I think, everything about the kit itself and how it's used. And if you're looking at the video in the background, you can also see how uh, the swaging products uh, uh, process takes place. Uh, let's get to what's important accuracy and how fast you can actually make those. Okay, so unfortunately for some reason, which is not quite clear to me because I must say that if you look at the pellet and weigh the pellet and look at its uh, uh, coaxiality and everything, I'm not sure if that's a word, but <laughs> uh, so they are co very well co coaxial, so no, uh, so no, they're not eccentric uh, or anything like that. Uh, despite that, they still don't shoot extremely well. Uh, actually, the first uh, bullets, pellets that Huben released, which were a very limited quantity, performed up to one MOA, even better at, at times. If you had everything correct, uh, they even uh, performed even sub one MOA. I was able to hit about four out of six uh, times the 2.5 centimeters at 100 meters, which is about 0 0.7 MOA, so less than one. But for some reason, those perform better despite the fact that they were, they looked terrible at the outside. They, were, they, were, they weren't even consistent in weight and they still perform very well. And this I get, from this I get about, uh, definitely under two MOA, but one MOA I don't reach, unfortunately. So that's the honest opinion. Uh, that's kind of a downside. I was hoping that this would perform very well. The other downside is that it, the swaging process is a slow process. So uh, I would put it like this. If this was a single shot or even a repeater uh, rifle, the, the Huben K1, it would be great. But <laughs> you don't want to use this to go outside uh, and uh, have fun plinking because it uh, it will take a lot more time for you to make those than it will to shoot those. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure what was the number, I, but I believe I calculated that in one hour you can make about just under 150 pieces. So 150 pellets. And that is if you're quite, uh, let's say, uh, good with your hands. If you're clumsy, then it will probably take a little longer. Um, uh, so those are my, let's say, issues with it. I, I love I love the thing, otherwise it's uh, extremely high quality built as usual with Huben. This material is extremely strong, uh, strong and hard. So pay attention that you don't drop this part on the concrete with the the front parts, actually the part that shapes the boat tail because it might chip off. So be very careful about that. Uh, other parts is, wouldn't be that uh, big of a deal if you drop it for some reason, but uh, this one is uh, more sensitive. Um, so that's it guys, it's not a bad product, uh, product. If it, it is slightly expensive from what I heard, it's about $350 per whole set, that's a retail price. Um, you can order only the die, so this set, which in my case would be enough since I'm not uh, cutting the lead, I'm uh, casting it, uh, and this would be $250, so $100 less. I actually don't know what uh, the price in euros, but in euros is probably slightly cheaper or about the same. Uh, not cheaper, but <laughs> less euros than dollars. Um, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, subscribe, rate, share, and um, keep on watching my videos. <laughs>